Hello and welcome to the calculator guide video on using the polynomial solver on a Casio FX991EX to help with completing the square. This video is going to use the information from the calculator's polynomial solver to help us put a quadratic into completed square form. Now it comes with this initial warning that this method may not get you all or any of the marks in a test or an exam situation. And it just depends on how the question is phrased. If we have a look at the question we've got here, write x squared plus 4x minus 5 in the form a and then we've got a bracket parentheses there x plus b squared plus c completed square form then you would be okay to use this method if it says show how to put that into um, that particular form or use an algebraic method or something like that then you can't use this form directly as it's obviously not going to give you the marks for that question but it is a good verification technique as well if you want to check your answer at the end once you've completed all the steps. Okay, so let's deal with this question. We've got to write this particular quadratic in the completed square form. Now let's just talk about the a, the a that we've got at the front there. The a is always going to match the coefficient, so the number in front of the x squared. Now if you don't see a number, like for example in this particular question x squared that really just means one x squared one x squared so a would be one which means we don't have to write it in we just assume there's one lot of and then we've got the bracket which will be x plus b squared so let's see if we can get the information from the calculator to fill in these other two missing values here b and c so from the menu we need to go to option a which is equation function two for polynomial and then we've got a quadratic, so the polynomial degree is 2. And then we're going to fill in what we know from the question. So it is 1x squared plus 4x and then minus 5. Press equals. And if you're familiar with this, the first two entries that we have here are the two solutions for x. And then if we keep going, what we have is information about the turning point of this quadratic, in this case a minimum. And this is going to be what's used here to help us put it into completed square form. Just as completing the square tells us the location of the turning point for a quadratic, in these examples we're going to be doing the reverse of that. We have the coordinates of the minimum point and we're going to use that to put the quadratic into the completed square form. Looking at the x-coordinate here, we've got an x-coordinate of negative 2. Now, if you focus in on what's in the brackets, in the parentheses there, x plus b, well, if x was negative 2, we've got to think, what, what would the b be? What, what would b our b if that bracket was to equal 0? So if x is negative 2, then we want b to be 2. So negative 2 plus 2 gives us 0. So essentially, it's whatever value we have for x here, but the opposite sign. So we want to change that to plus 2, so our b is plus 2. So, so far it's x plus 2 all squared. And then if we press equals one more time, we get the y coordinate of the minimum point, which is negative 9, minus 9. And that is just what c is, so including the sign. So our c would be negative in this case, minus 9. So our completed square for this example would be x plus 2 squared, minus 9. Let's have a look at a second example. This time we have a coefficient in front of the x squared. We've got 2x squared minus 20x plus 47. Again, we're just going to write in the form a x plus b all squared plus c. So we're okay to use the calculator to do this. And again, let's just reference the a. Now the calculator doesn't tell us the a directly. This is where we've got to be careful. But the a is just the number that is in front of the x squared on your original quadratic. So in this case, our a is two. So we're going to start off our completed square with two. Uh, let's put this into the calculator and find out our b and c. So if we just press equals again, we can go around again. Let's just change the numbers two x squared minus 20x and then plus 47 we've got our two solutions here first and then we've got minimum x coordinate of 5 so again you're thinking about if x was 5 what would make that bracket inside the brackets equal to 0 it would be negative 5 5 minus 5 gives you 0 so b is minus 5 and then equals and this will be our c directly 
minus 3, so our completed square would be 2, x minus 5, all squared, minus 3. Let's have a look at a third example then. This one's slightly different because we have uh, a negative in front of the x squared here, minus x squared minus 5x plus 10. And again, let's just start off by thinking about the A. The calculator doesn't give us the A directly, but we're just comparing what we've got there with the coefficient in front of the x squared. This is essentially minus 1, negative 1. We don't write the 1 in. So it's minus 1. So A is minus 1, but you would just write that as a, a minus sign in front of your bracket. So minus, and then we're going to start our bracket, and we're going to use the calculator to find B and C once more. So let's go around again, minus x squared, so I'm just going to put that in as minus 1x squared, minus 5x plus 10 equals, we've got our two solutions again. Uh, now this time just note as we get to the x here of the turning point, notice how it's changed from min to max. Yeah, so if we have a negative x squared, we're going to have a maximum point as our turning point there. And we've also got a fraction as our answer here, negative 5 over 2. So remember what we're doing is we're thinking about the B as being the same as that but with the opposite sign. So our B would be plus 5 over 2. So it's minus and then brackets x plus 5 over 2 squared and then our C is going to be, if we just press equals, get the y coordinate. Our C is going to be 65 over 4 and I would suggest that you do leave it in fraction form rather than pressing SD and writing it as a decimal. Leave these in fraction form, it looks a lot neater. It's the best way to present your answer there. So there's three more here for you to have a go at using this technique. If you want to pause the video now and have a go at these, and then I shall be back later and show you the solutions for these. And here are the solutions now. You may want to just check those off and check that you've got those correct. So there you go, a method of using information from the polynomial solver to help us with completing the square. Let me know in the comments below if you think you're ever going to use this technique, if you think there's any examples where it may not work, or whether you think it's maybe good for verifying once you've done the full algebraic method. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future videos, but that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you next time on The Calculator Guide.